Hier ist Mr. Brian Adams. Welcome to the show. Just have a seat. Yeah, make yourself comfortable. Your applause. Thank you. Danke schön. Yeah, bitte schön. Danke schön. Yeah, Great. Yeah, thank you, thank you. This is something you might have missed as an artist to have yes, an applause from a, from a live crowd. Yes, very much. Nice have to you... hear it. Thank you. Danke schön. <laughs> Uh, we, we just saw, let's just uh, talk quickly about the, the music video because there's yes. something really special about it. Uh, the first thing that is special about it is that you care everything for yourself, you know? How, how many cutverse would you give for this video? <laughs> um, cutverse, maybe uh, eight out of ten. Eight out of yeah, because ten? Because I, I, uh, we didn't uh, show the whole thing, but can I we, think... Can we do, can we get a rating on the video before I go? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Be very, I would like that. We, we can do it, yeah, we, yeah maybe we, we can write it, uh, <laughs> we can Twitter it. Uh, yeah. Eight out of ten cutverse. <laughs> Okay. This is something really good, yeah? yeah. Special. Yeah, there got to be something, some, some aims to achieve for the future. I, I, I so. think so, at least tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you can make it. But uh, one really interesting thing is, uh, first of all, that you create everything on, uh, by, by yourself and all the ideas and all the, the, the video creating process. Um, but I heard that also your real mom is in that video. Yeah, yeah she is was. Is that true? Yeah, she's in the video. That wasn't her do, yeah. doing the doing this. Yeah, no, 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 no. no wasn't, she, she, she wasn't twerking, I no, guess. No, that wasn't no. her twerking. No, she's but not she's, twerking. she's in the earlier part of the video. Yeah, she, yeah. I mean, she's she's going to be 94 this weekend. So 94. 94. Okay, yeah. so that's an applause worth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's. Yeah, she's. We call her the legend. Yeah. My my brother and I. We my brother and I. We call her the legend because it's always like, I call my brother on the phone. And say, how's she, how's she doing? How's the legend? And he he just look at me like, <laughs> you know, because something else is going on. But um, no, she's a painter and she's a, she's uh, really fun. And I thought I'd have her in the video. When you get parents that are older, yeah, you just want to be closer to them. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so, so a lovely story to hear that she's really taking part in Yeah, those... sweet. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. And you, you, you do everything by yourself. Uh, during the pandemic, you did the whole new album. You were uh, writing it, you were recording it, composing it. And then you had all the instruments and you were playing them all by yourself in the, in the, in the, in the studio. I'm an egomaniac. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but you had to help yourself because no, it was we, the I pandemic, right? Exactly. I couldn't put the band together because they wouldn't leave the house. Yeah. And, um, so I sat down with a, a guy who, he, he was from my studio, he made the tea yeah. at my studio, and uh, I said, okay, you're now the engineer, and we're gonna make some music. And that's what we did for a year. But, but, but is it like that you, that you kind of like it to have some kind of a handicap to uh, challenge yourself to do Kind of, yeah, no, it's, it's, it was just challenging, you know. Yeah. To, I mean, I'm not a drummer, but I, yeah. I became a drummer last year. <laughs> and so I have a lot of respect for I have a lot of respect for the drummers in the world. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Teresa, she's right around the corner. Okay, good applause for this. She's uh, new to the band. So um, a whole new respect. Yeah. I mean, ooh, that's hard work. And uh, um, were you able to look your own drummer in the eye when you were rehearsing? He hasn't talked to me yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. But uh, you do a lot of different stuff. Um, you said your mom is a painter. Yeah. You're a musician, and now, a couple of years ago, you became a really, really successful photographer as well. Yeah, I mean, I've been working on that for a long time, too. But, yeah, quietly. Um, but, but you are really respected. Oh, that's um, kind. Thank you. So where's the difference between someone who, who just tells to be and mm, tells everyone I think I'm a photographer? It's only if the phone rings. You yeah. Know, <laughs> if the phone doesn't ring, you know you're not happening. But if occasionally someone phones you and says, hey, we'd like you to come and help us with a job, then, yeah. you know, I, I usually say yes. And the Queen did that, right? Well, yeah, yeah that, that's true. I did, uh, yeah. That was a number of years ago, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I did a portrait of Her Majesty. Yeah, you did a portrait for a stamp that is released. It became in... a stamp afterwards. Uh, ah, okay, so you didn't if, know. If you want the full story, the full story is that uh, uh, when she has her Jubilee, huh? and I got asked as the representative for Canada. Uh -huh. Okay. To, to do her portrait, because they wanted one from each country of the Commonwealth. All right. And so. They, uh, the phone rang and my agent said, hey, what are you doing on Wednesday? Uh -huh. I said, oh, not much. He says, do you want to photograph the queen? I said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Whereabouts? He goes, oh, it's just at her house. Yeah. I said, 
what, which house? He goes, it's not far from you. It's called Buckingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. I think I'm free. <laughs> okay. That, that, that's I really think I'll funny. make so, myself free. And you have to talk to the manager. Say, can I have five more minutes? <laughs> and all this yeah, stuff that well, usually people do the other way around with you. You know what? It's, I don't really have too many problems, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe and, so. And, and, and you can always tell if it goes okay if they call you again. <laughs> which never happens. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 you know, you, you don't have to go necessarily out of your comfort zone, but you do. Did you have your personal rock and roll moment? What did you destroy? Who did you, I don't know, maybe... Oh, um, yeah, I have to think about that one. I, yeah? Yeah, I, I never really destroyed stuff because I didn't want to have to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the thing with me because I can't afford. Uh, yeah. I just didn't want to pay for it. No, I mean, in the early days, we would you know, muck up stuff and throw things around the room. But, I mean, that's sort of normal. Uh, yeah. I, I think we had some... You know, some pie fights and that sort of thing. But yeah, uh, the, okay. There was one time that, that I think the catering was really bad. We were in, in New Mexico. Was it today? No. Oh. No, the catering okay. was very good today. Uh, okay. But no, it was the catering was bad, and 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 it wasn't just me. It was the crew, everybody, and they just stacked their plates on top of each other in the middle of the table. This big mountain of plates and and beans. Okay. It was, it was definitely cog first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was maybe 10 out of 10 cog Oh, that first. was a 10 out of 10 <laughs> cog first. Very good. But you had some colleagues, or you have, still have some colleagues, uh, which um, did a bit different, yeah? They set the bar for insane stories really high. And we have a little quiz on this uh, show, which deals with the crazy stories in the history of rock and roll. Okay, are you, are you going to ask me questions and I yeah. have to figure out who this is? Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. okay, good. Yeah, and, and, and this little game is called the Rock and Roll Hall of Shame. Yeah. So, um, here we go with the first question. Okay. And um, the question uh, goes like this. Who drank 15 glasses of wine on a flight from Seattle to London, then knocked over a service card, poured yogurt on himself and a crew member, assaulted the board crew using his tie and tried to grab the control panel of an exit door, announcing that he was going home. <laughs> Who like, was it? Was that, it? That could be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you know him personally? No. no. Um, how, how many guesses do I get at this? Um, I, I, give, I, give, you a, was, I okay. give you ABC. So, uh, was it Izzy Stradlin from Guns N' Roses? Was it Peter Buck from R.E.M. or Tommy Lee from Motley, Motley Crew? Eight bottles of wine? Uh, 15 glasses. 15 glasses. 15 glasses. I don't know how big the glasses were, but... Is he... Is he Peter Buck from R.E.M. or Tommy Lee? It sounds like Tommy Lee. Yeah, yeah you know, everything <laughs> shitty sounds like Tommy Lee, but... Uh... But the only, only thing you said, tie. You yeah. said a tie. I don't tie. think Tommy wears a tie. He, he doesn't own. So I'm going to say uh, Peter Buck. <laughs> Peter Buck? Peter Buck from R.E.M. You won't expect this, but it's the correct answer. He did! Yes! So, we have one, one other question. One other question. Who snuck their pet into a Four Seasons hotel? A little side note at this point, the pet was a mountain lion. Um, was it A, Slash from Guns N' Roses? Was it Rod Stewart? Or was it C, Robbie Williams? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Slash. Slash? Yeah, I think... Slash? Well, because he lives in L.A. Well, then why would he be in L.A. if he had a hotel? So, uh, what would Rod be doing with a mountain lion? Yeah. So, uh, may may maybe... Um, One more clue. Give me a clue. Come on. The clue would be that your answer, Slash, was right. Ah! So, <laughs> that's the clue. Yeah. And he lived in a hotel because it was an earthquake. So, that two for two? Yeah, two for two, and he had an, there, there was an earthquake happening, and he had all these toxic animal, poisonous animals at home, like snakes and lizards and, and yeah. lions and whatever. I wasn't going to say Robbie because Robbie, did... nah, he could be in LA too. Yeah, yeah, he lives Rob... in LA. Well, who wants a mountain lion? Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe um, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a thing beyond. If you if you go far and far away from a normal life. You certainly end up doing crazy stuff because you can. <laughs> Didn't so I'm um, two for two. That's pretty good. Two for two, and that uh, was the Rock and Roll Hall of Shame. Hey, wait.
Um, I, I heard that, that, that you had a house here in Berlin, like a, a house for artists. Yeah, it's true. And, yeah, and you did, so you have a special connection to... I, d I did have it up until the, the, the pandemic, then I sold it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but I, I did a, I did a up in, in Schöneweide. Yeah, Schöneweide, yeah. yeah. It's a just right around the yeah. corner. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was actually really nice. It was by the Spray. Mm -hmm. um, but um, then I realized that um, in Berlin, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in springtime, there's a lot of pollen here. And uh, I got quite allergic to the pollen, so I thought, mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> there was a... Maybe I'll just come visit. Yeah, you know? yeah okay. Um, another thing which... But I do uh... like it here, by the way. I want to tell you that. I really like... And the reason I like wanted to do this project was because I, I love being in this city. Yeah. It's a super, super place. Is, is it still, you know, so, you know we, uh, we, we, as a Ber uh, someone from Berlin living here, we all think, okay... Uh, when someone visits Berlin, so what's this thing that they like about this city, you know? What's this one it's thing? It's inexplicable. It what? It's inexplicable. I don't know this That word. means you can't... <laughs> it means you can't really explain it. Yeah. It's just a, a feeling. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe I have the feeling when I have more distance. Maybe we can exchange lives for a year or two or a hundred? Yeah. No? <laughs> you know, a, a friend of mine said to me, uh, Brian, I, I, I would love to be you, except for the first 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because your first record... I, I, the first uh, record deal that you had was worth one dollar. That's what they paid me. That's what they paid you. Uh, yeah. uh, normally, when you buy something for one dollar from the city or something, you have the obligation to yeah, restore it. I got I to gotta tell you, that, <laughs> that was in the 70s, okay? That was yeah. 1978 I signed yeah. that deal. Yeah. So I was 18, you know. I was happy to get anything at 18. You know, I had no money. I didn't even couldn't afford a bus fare. Yeah. You know, so. But they had to give you some money because otherwise it won't be a legal contract. Correct, yeah. correct. Yeah, I still have the, I have the check still. Yeah. I have it on my wall. That's a good story. It, well, it's humble, you know. It, it wasn't really a contract. It was the first chance, and you made it. It's my first check. And you took it. Yeah, I'll take a dollar. Thanks very much. <laughs> very good. And, <laughs> and uh, now you're going on tour. You're going on tour in uh, uh, winter 22. Well, listen, we were supposed to be in Germany now playing on tour, but yeah. because of the COVID, they, they, the, the regulations... Too heavy and too strict. And can't do it. Yeah. So, and, and, of course, 10 days later, they lifted these restrictions. So, anyway, we're coming back in November and December and looking forward to it as well. We're playing in Berlin as well, so I'm very excited. Very good. Yeah, everyone's looking forward, not only you. We're waiting. Like we did in the past, like we as Germans, like we did in the past 20 or 30 years. Always, when you come around, it was always, always a party. Uh, everyone tells that uh, visited one of your concerts.